Now let's go to Columbus on the Deseret First Credit Union hotline to talk to the head coach of the BYU Cougars, Sean Olmstead, making his third appearance in a national championship match in five opportunities with BYU. Sean, congratulations on the semifinal win. And here we go. We're playing for the Natty. Yeah, <laughs> here we go. Yeah, <laughs> yep. Said it. That, that's it right there. Thank you, guys. Well, you you played in two national championship games yourself on, on the roster, and you started in in one and oh four and oh one. Now you're going to your third. Is there some sort of expertise you can lend, having coached and played in multiple now to this group? Um, no, I, you know. Uh, expertise i don't know i think each team i've I've said it all along each team is pretty unique and so uh you know we're it's hard to just say hey treat this like a normal match you can't there's so many things going around right now like the guys the outside things they it's it's hard to completely block all that out and so we we have to do the best we can do to keep it uh, another match and another opportunity but you know this is this is what this team's worked for and worked to accomplish and the reality is there's you know, the, some of the guys are going to feel nerves. Others aren't going to feel as many, you know, it's each athlete's different. So we do all we can to get them on the same page and, and just uh, continue to, to talk about, you know, what we've been working on, which is every opportunity is a chance for us to, to improve. And, and we're looking forward to that. That's what last night was. It was, an, it was a great opportunity as well. We got pushed, you know, we were able to play well. We got through, got through the ruts, you know, weathered the storm and uh, made some big plays down the stretch. So it's going to be like you said. It's it's a, it's a pretty heavy matchup, uh, big time matchup, you know. And it's you play the sport to be in these opportunities. That's what you do. And so now here we are, and we got to make the most of it. You know, Sean. It, there's in in any sport for teams that have a lot of success and go to the postseason every year. Sometimes it can feel a bit routine because you're just there year after year after year. I have to imagine, even though you have been to the national championship game many times, as Jeremy mentioned, as a player and as a coach, there's probably nothing routine about going to another national title game. No, I don't think so. Yeah, no, I mean, you you like to think, oh, it is routine. It's just clockwork, but it's really not. You know, e again, I go back to each each group, each team is it's so unique. They're so different and you see the dynamics of them. And, and it's uh, so. I don't think there's a routine. I don't know. Maybe uh, Mike Krzyzewski at, at Duke, it's just clockwork for that guy or those guys. I don't know. But um, these are just, there's they're, they're opportunities and great experiences for these young men, and we get to be a part of them. And, and yeah, we're, we're thankful for that. This is two years in the making because last uh, year, obviously, the pandemic blows things up. But uh, even 2019, when, uh, you know, freshman Davide Gardini and a sophomore Gabby Garcia-Fernandez and company Hawaii comes in with that big set streak and beats BYU. <laughs> the next year, right, your team grows together and you, do you play what I call the greatest volleyball match ever played in BYU history. Both undefeated mm -hmm. 1v2 at Hawaii, 10,000 fans. You guys hit 600 and sweep the Rainbow Warriors. You, you lose in five the next night in extras. And then the pandemic hits. And then you don't have a chance to play non-conference this year. And people have been waiting for this matchup. So how much of what happened last year plays into what's going to happen tomorrow night in terms of the emotional buildup, but also the scouting report? Yeah, um, obviously a ton. Because, uh, you know, we understand that. And it, it, the press conference last night was a similar, a very, very similar question. And so uh, don't blame me for just, you know, staying, hey, you know, let's stay in this and, and where are we right now? We got to, we got to go serve and pass a little. We got to take care of these things to try to control the, the emotional buildup. But I also can't neglect that, hey, th there's not going to be the emotions of what you just mentioned. You know, the excitement of, okay, here we go again, you know, and, and any way you want to look at it, both teams have put together uh, outstanding rosters, a body of work that, that they deserve, we deserve, you know, both teams to be in this this moment and this opportunity. And so there's no doubt that there's going to be that that buildup in the emotions. And I think, uh, honestly, I think the team that's going to be able to manage those appropriately are, are going to be the team that's going to be able to kind of weather the storm of the match, the ups and downs, the ups and flows uh, of a volleyball match and, and come out on top and be able to make those plays when needed because that's, that's what it's setting up to be. It's going to be a back and forth just – boom, 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 and one or two points is going to separate that team down the stretch. 
What were your takeaways from the win last night over Lewis? And in terms of adjustments from that match to now Hawaii, where do where you feel the adjustments need to be made? Um, yeah, you know, we, I, I felt we, if you look at that match, I felt we really um, kind of got some energy and, and we're, we're able to play really well with uh, off of, off of their sir, their missed serves. And then I felt like they did the opposite off ours, you know, so it kind of went back and forth and you saw the match go like that. And so we, we just talked to the guys that I, I, I felt there was a moment, you know, I, I can't overlook that. We, we've got to recognize that and talk about it. I felt there was a moment that, um, we, I, I wouldn't say lost a little focus, but we got a little rattled in the moment. Like, you know, kind of, we went away from all of the things that were working and had been working for these guys. And so they do a great job with, with each other and bringing each other back to the right place. And they did that and were able to regroup. And then you saw some really, really good plays down the stretch of that fourth set where, where they were doing the right things, getting more comfortable, uh, back to, to where they were at the start of the match. We're talking to Sean Olmstead, head coach of the BYU Cougars from Columbus, Ohio, as BYU prepares for Hawaii in the national championship match tomorrow night, 8 Eastern on ESPNU. Sean, certainly this program has been amazing for a long time. You were a part of the beginnings of that where BYU won three national championships in six years. BYU's certainly been close uh, in 13, 16, 17. Of course, other uh, you know NCAA tournament appearances in 14 and 18. And here we are in 2021 with an opportunity to snap a 17-year drought. I know you want to stay in the moment, and it's the day before, but certainly there's uh, pressure and positive pressure uh, in a good way to sort of end the streak, right? So how are you trying to stay in the moment to ensure that your team can perhaps do it tomorrow night? Yeah, uh, keeping these guys occupied and, and staying, uh, as you said, we're, we, we've talked all year, and I say it over and over. We said it again last night in the locker room. We said it again before the match, you know, because – because I, the rumblings already started when 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 we saw that Hawaii not not with our guys but it was literally it was from outside you, you could just sense it you could just see it and it was like oh my gosh this is going to be BYU and Hawaii and I was like whoa hold your horses here like Lewis is a freaking darn good team yeah you know and so we are saying with our team is be where you are you know be where your feet are and I said that to the guys I said hey what what have we what's what do we tell each other every single day. And Gabby's the one that spoke up, hey, be where your feet are. And I said, this is it. We're here in this match. That's where we are. So we have to do that in, in, in our prep, in our practice, in the routines, in the team activities, and, and doing, doing our best to just keep away from looking beyond. You know, you, whenever you get too far ahead of yourself, you, you're going to find yourself in a daze and just confusion because you're not in the moment and whatever that may be. So we've got to just stay here you know, continue to do our thing and be able to control those things that we can control. We can't control the rest of them. Those are going to fall as they may, but, you know, we got to be able to be here in that moment and where we're at. Before we get to the next question, let's take a look at our stat of the day. It's the BYU Sports Nation stat of the day. Gabby Garcia Fernandez, two aces away from breaking the BYU career aces record. Now, Coach, I know it's all about the team goals, but how awesome would it be to get an individual record like that in a national championship game? Yeah, please. Oh, uh, yeah, I don't. I mean, you know, <laughs> but uh, but <laughs> is it? Jerem is 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 two like if that's two a, happens, pass. that's it. Two to pass, one to tie. So, uh, okay. Yeah. But you know, and, and you look at all the matches he did miss out on, well, that's, that's, that's crazy. That's mind blowing, yep. you know, because he'd be, he'd be well in, in the lead. We all know that he'd have 200. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. That, that that's remarkable. We're lucky he's on our side and uh, you know, he went through a little stretch where he missed a few last night and it, that's just Gabby. We're okay with it. The guys don't say a word. They don't, they don't, put down their head they know he's going to come around and look how he came around offensively physically down the stretch he he took some big swings for us down at the uh, at, at the end of the match okay let's finish with this certainly tomorrow night it means a lot we've talked about the stakes this is a team you you beat in front of 10,000 people last year you know and, and the split in Honolulu you've said throughout the season and we've talked about this that you know um your best is good enough and it feels like you're playing for two years worth. So it almost feels like there's a lot riding on this. Um, what's it going to be like tomorrow when you take the floor and try and do something really special in the history of BYU men's volleyball? 
yeah, it's going to be amazing that we get to be a part of it. And uh, I tell the guys all the time that uh, we've got these, got the guys have these wristbands right here, you know, that uh, they're the lucky ones. You know, we're the lucky ones, man. Look at us. We get to play a sport at this level with each other. This group of guys look around us like, come on, it doesn't get any better than this. And uh, now here we are competing for a national championship. And uh, I, I firmly believe our best is good enough. Uh, no matter what, because I believe that our best is the best. And so that's what we're going to strive to do. And the guys are going to be focused on and uh, it's going to be a great matchup. Are you okay after John Stanley tackled you in the locker room, by the way? <laughs> I, t hey, I tackled John. Come on, <laughs> come on. I took John down. I got a few, I got a few, I got a few blows in. I mean, John's just, John's just John. We, we love John and he came in there and got after it. And then it was match point. And I'm like, ah, he's going to take a little off. And he just zipped it in there, you know, and they, they, they did side out, but it's just John, John and will their connection and the connection that the guys have towards John. It's just awesome. I thought that he, and there was a few others, you know, big time plays that turn things, but man, he went on a stretch there, got a dig in, in the end and just, he went, you know, and it's, it's just, it's John. It's so fun to watch. A kid named John Stanley making plays in 2021 and in the 60s for BYU Volleyball. Pretty cool. Okay, Sean, we there appreciate the time. All the karma we could yes. possibly send yes. your way is is going to Columbus. And, uh, you know, I'm trying to make my way out there. I think it could be quite the night. So uh, best of luck tomorrow night against White. Okay, okay thanks, guys. John Olmstead on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline. Deseret First, you know why. We show how he understands the stakes. Like he was a player under Carl McGowan, early 2000s, where BYU won national championships. He's the like even when he was the women's coach, he would talk about, "Hey, here's what it takes to win a national championship. Let's go, let's go." And then he's been to two, now three. This is a huge yeah. moment in the history of the program tomorrow night. Look